so case studies is, in a, is a different way of saying it's actual structures that, that are still standing that needed some form of intervention. And when you, when you organize that intervention, when you plan that intervention, you'll need to look at the lifespan of the structure, the remaining lifespan of the structure, and take decisions so that the lifespan is guaranteed or the lifespan will be achieved without having further intervention. So that's the idea. But the general knowledge of the structures is that the fact you have to intervene in the structure means it's going to be a cyclic event. It's always going to be going to need some form of further intervention anyway. Because once it starts corroding, it's very hard to stop it from corroding further. Because all the conditions that make the structure corrode are still there. You're trying to keep it away from the structure for certain duration. And also, all the issues with the structure are already present within the structure. No matter how much you try to remove it, they can always come back. So thereafter, it's a process of managing the structure a bit more carefully. But hopefully, you can reduce the nature of the intervention in the future, reduce the cost of that intervention. So. But the reality of the whole scenario is ultimately you'll take a decision for intervention based on what's available. Available resources to you, available technology around you, and what's more applicable to the structure. You can't test everything out in a, in a tiny structure. Okay. So it will be, to an extent, it will be a deviation from the whole life management principles that we have seen before. But you will also see the decision making coming in with the idea of reducing further impacts and further cost. These are actual cases, actual structures, they are still standing. Um, the first two cases that I am going to talk, they were built in the 1930s, so they are 80 years old structures. They were built mostly for one or two farm vehicles and maybe a few cars in the 1930s. But ever since the, the traffic has changed, there's a million cars available, there's farm vehicles or the, the tractors and the trailers have gone from 3-4 ton vehicle to 40 ton vehicles, proper big vehicles. And it's all part of the, the network of roads. So times you might get fully lo loaded trucks waiting in the bridge trying to go clear. So the scenario has changed from when they were building the structure to the load traffic now. And that's the challenge for us anyway. We're, we designed the structure for a particular loading and with time the loading will change and the structure still have to perform and carry that loading. So dealing with older structures, the first priority will be to see what can it take loading wise. That's your that uh, can be done theoretically. You know. I'm going to put the case forward and then let's see if we can build an idea of hierarchy for, for starting the work on the structure, hierarchy for assessing the structure. Okay. For that I probably will need, not probably, we'll take input from you and then we'll decide what should be the hierarchy. So this is Abercorn Bridge. It's a very simple, straightforward bridge. There's nothing complicated about it. And it's connecting um, a small village to another small village. So it's really not a big traffic. But the problem is the traffic that goes through are heavy enough that it's nearly 28, 30 ton vehicles anything between 18 to 28 tons. Over the years, it was built in 1932, the system is called Hennebeek system. You familiar with the name Hennebeek? Have you heard of it before? You should. That's the very person who patented reinforced concrete, for which we pay no patency charges anymore. And 
he's a French engineer who patented the uh, concrete structure, the reinforced concrete structure. So up until then, and even in his time, the uh, this was the reinforced structure. So that's your concrete and that's your steel. And it's a very dual mechanism arrangement that he then patented and further research and further accidents forced them to put steel then inside concrete. And that was also part of the patency. So around 1932, this is a patented technology. It was done, carried out by a company in, in England called LG Michelle. Uh, they still exist, not LG Michelle, they exist as Michelle. So they did the design. Um, this is in northwest of Northern Ireland. It's in the middle of nowhere. So they must have sent the design over to um, over to the engineers here in Northern Ireland from England. And I don't think anybody would have moved in from London to see how the structure is done because there's a lot of structures being constructed. All of these information matters. So we were brought in. I I was part of road service when we were doing the structure. I worked for them for a year and it was my responsibility to get the structure into tender. So before it goes into tender we have to outline what are the minimum criteria to repair and if contractor um, comes up with a better idea then obviously it's vetted against the against our calculations. So we have to do a lot of things and I'll, I'll go into that in details. Um, any obvious problem with the structure? Or? <coughs> well there's nothing obviously wrong with the structure. The problems with the structure was to do with the drainage. Okay, So the structure is designed as a a two arrow system so the drainage was designed like that so the structure at the top here peaks and then the water will run on either side it's good enough it's clever enough system but it also leaned towards the southern side so that the water comes quickly from the north to the south and then drains off that was the idea but a bit later came the walkways so they rebuilt the walkway on either side on the north side they built the walkway for nearly a meter on the south side they didn't have much space so they built the walkway that that width so that's a pedestrian access all of these played a, a part in unfolding whatever unfolded afterwards but the reality structure was normally then would have been designed for 60 years and it did serve 60 years with no problem but if you look from the top the southern side which is this side that you see were um, coned off coned off in the sense the traffic was restricted so it's a two lane traffic in the top one lane was closed southern lane was entirely closed with cones put all over and the bridge had a three ton restriction what's three ton in vehicle Loading. What vehicle did you know is roughly three tons? Three tons is three thousand kilograms. I don't think buses would be three ton. I think it'll be more than three ton. So probably a, a minivan, a bit bigger car. So it's. Yeah, well, Land Rover, the old Land Rover will be three ton. That will be the line. So, which means it's not really useful for the people because it's farmers either side, and there's a cattle market on that side, and they need to get access to the cattle market. Where they, it's a traditional market where they still trade. So the hay and everything else have to come that side. The fertilizers have to come that side, and the farmers have to bring everything to the farm on that side. So. Farm vehicles are roughly 18 tons. It's not the farm vehicle, just the trailer. 
that the farm vehicles pull. So that's really not useful for them. But what we've known for a, a good period is that they still go. They look at the structure and then say, it's been there for 80 years, I'm going to go. 28 tons, 40 tons, we have seen them taking everything. Okay. So the structure is fine. It's, it's just that we now have a risk of it collapsing anything more than three tons. Um, so peculiar features, let me, um, let me see if there's more picture. So this is what you see if you strip out everything, this is the structural layout of the of this span. It's, it's what we call as a ladder system. <coughs> So essentially, those are the main beams. They look very thin, but they are very deep. They're the main beams. So it's almost like a ladder. So you have two of those main beams, and then you have these cross beams. These are the main cross spokes. This is a secondary beam, taking the loading from the slab into the secondary, straight into the transverse, and back into the edge beam. So if you look at here, this pan, everything that's applied anywhere in this slab is transferred to the edge beam to the transverse beam and to the end beams. So it's a very simple, um, very simple arrangement. These edge beams, they look narrow they, because they are narrow, but they are 2.2 meter in height. Okay. So if you look at the picture, the edge beam starts from here all the way to here. They use the parapet as the beam. So it's this is why we knew from the beginning that 40 ton is not going to face the structure. But we have the risk that some of these secondary beams were so damaged that they can just collapse. It will be local failure anyway. But what we didn't know is then the load transfer will be to the transverse beam. And some of them further down, especially here and also the end of it, where the water was running into were in severe state you could use a timber to break the concrete. So, so this was our job and uh, this was my job. What do I do first? You're the asset manager so let me transfer the liability now to you. What do you do? Tell me the first thing you're going to do. Collect the data available. Okay, what data? Okay. So, I'm not sure if recognizance of 2N on it, but we'll figure out. So, recognizance is where you gather the information. Okay, so visual data, visual inspection. In, in the UK, there are inspections at three levels. It's called routine inspection, where a person will come and look at the structure and then record few features of it. The second is principal inspection, where the person will be in touching distance to the structure and look through it very closely. That's where they pick up the cracks, any other major things, visually. The third level of inspection is special investigation or special inspection, and that's triggered by the uh, principal inspection or the and there the, the person will be able to go underneath the structure or whatever they want to look at it. Again it could be visual or it could be uh, one of those NDT tests. So special investigation is very costly business and that's triggered only at the principal investigation. So routine investigation, routine inspection is done every six months. Princip inspection is done every two years. They can accelerate it to every year depending on how bad the structure is. Special investigation is only carried out as and when required. So we know there's a record and we have access to the record. Okay. And they have noted that over years how things are deteriorating and it's very visible from their description. And it's very repeatedly this magic joint where there's a construction joint on the top not construction, uh, expansion joint on the top. So are you getting a bearing of the structure? Um, 
So the structure is two parts, span one, two and three all together are made of one design. Okay, just take that now. And span four here is a different design. Okay, so they call this approach span because it's over a uh, dry land and river water starts from here, goes all the way down to here. So across the river there's these massive piers and the, the bridge is almost put on top of the massive piers up to here. Here's a big expansion joint that you see and then this side will have intermittent columns as well as the pier. So it's two different design. From what we can see the water, this is the south side, so the water would have gone that direction and this direction because the bridge was tilted towards one side. Water was coming here and attacking this edge beam, the primary load carrying member of the structure. And because the water is flowing towards the, the expansion joint, underneath it, this main beam here and all the other beams were in absolute bad state. Just the nature of the expansion joint. So anyway, back to here. So visual inspection, what else? I'm not sure if it's applicable here, but you do need to collect permissions from landowner if you're accessing the bridge in a different direction. It's not given, it's not a right, it's the landowner's right, so you need to ask them. So for example, where I'm taking the photograph is a farmer's land. And I need to have access, I need to have asked their permission to be in their land. To get here, I don't need permission, but I can't get here without asking the farmer. Because I'll need to come around that way. So that's those things you need to do. Historical records. Records, what's the beauty of historical records? Especially what are you looking at? Flooding. It's a bridge over a river. Subsidence of the column is it's something you need to be watching out for. Those are massive failures which you need to always have a priority in your head. And any other damage the water could have done. Water can do significant damage. So any flooding issues, any news that been reported of vehicles burning, fire accidents, or any other relevant information. So you need to collect all of them. And th these are all Google exercise except that. You find out from the people, you find out from the newspapers. Okay, so here the flooding, the accidents, the fire. Fire is critical. Any fire was, you know. Okay, any more? Part of the recognizance. Yeah, I can come. Or in this step. call it different names, special inspection or detailed inspection. You need to get construction details. Basically, the starting point should be drawings. And it's not just any drawing. It's as built drawing. Drawing is one thing that you plan and design beforehand, but they could have deviated from it on the structure for a number of practical reasons. And normally, these days, most contractors will make the corrections on a plan and submit it as, as a record. You need to get hold of that as built drawing because that shows the deviation. That might become critical. Because the nature of concrete is you can't see anything. It's all gray. Everything is gray. So you need to find out what's underneath it. Okay. What else? 
structural So if we can get hold of the structural analysis report either done before the structure was built as part of the design or anybody who have done work afterwards to saying the structure will carry this loading. So try to get all of those reports if available and then the usual things we start our business. Level. Has anybody taken levels? Some of the Aspil drawing also will have levels when they finish it, they'll take the level readings and they'll write it on the plan. I was lucky in this structure, it had very detailed drawing, like explicitly detailed drawing. That was actual drawing, so we didn't know it was as built drawing, we had to check later on. But a person who did that also had scribbled the levels on the top of the pier. So if you look at this picture, this image, there was a, a 1930 drawing, but they put the levels in here. Very clever. And they also had uh, drawing lines on it to say how far they constructed every day. They called it base. And the best thing is 80 years later, I can go back to the structure and tell exactly where the bay lines were. Because it was very evident where the construction joint was. They finished 1930, so they would have done hand mixing. So they finished it. And then they started next day and you look at the structure, there's a clear line of water and rusting where they finished. And this is how the construction joins unfold. So we knew that the, the record is fairly good at that point. So yeah, and this, this is where you start, isn't it? So what's the handle? Anything else? Did I miss anything else? Pretty good. So, I'm going to run out of space here, so I'm going to say traffic. Strength. Because quite often people take cores and assess the strength, and they would already have that information. So find out any information you have regarding the material or structural properties. Materials. Why am I looking at um, why am I looking at strength and materials? What am I trying to avoid? At every stage, I'm trying to avoid the major problems. Okay, I'm just checking for major problems. So, in levels, I'm checking for subs.